Well, everybody loves a mixing station. This guy's got a mixing station making the most of his space. He's got boxes on top. We got salt buckets underneath. Speaking of salt buckets, I like how he has the mixing station up high enough that we can get a salt bucket under the spigot. It's probably a salt water on the right. And even his RO side has a spigot as well. He can get that five gallon bucket under the spigot, which is nice. You don't have to try to put it underneath there at an angle or put a smaller container there. You don't even have to use a hose in this case. You just roll the five gallon bucket right underneath there and it fits right into uh, the outlet of that. That is nice. And uh, hey, you gotta have some metal sitting right next to your mixing station. He's even got a nice towel hanger, hanger built in to his mixing vat. I wonder how he did that, because that's useful since he doesn't have a pipe up top like I do. Where else are you gonna hang your towel? Curious on how he got that done. Good call, I like it. Lots of hose here, running water wherever he wants. And a nice use of some flex there as well. Make that little corner. Instead of using a 90, use some flex. Nothing wrong with flex PVC. It has this case, it has this place, and there you go. That's one place where it definitely makes sense. Curious about where this bar, looks like half inch bar coming up from underneath the mixing station and going over there is going. Can't quite tell, but hey, every mixing station is different. This guy is clearly doing the most that he can with the space that he has because everything looks very packed in here. Uh, yeah, speaking of packed in, another shelving unit right underneath some HVAC. Why not? Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? And let's see, we got Looks like a quarantine tank with something in it. Gotta say the quarantine tank's a little small in my, uh, for my taste, certainly for any fish that's bigger than like Chromis or a goby. That looks like a bio cube of some sort. Wouldn't put a tang in there. Realize he's got to maximize space, but look, he's got room for at least a 40 gallon breeder up there or somewhere else, even if it's temporary. Set up a 55 for your bigger fish. I understand he's got to do what he's got to do. I would like to see a bigger quarantine tank on this system. Dedicated computer here, laptop of some sort, four down in the fish room. This is a nice thing to have. Now, it's a give and a take with me a little bit because sometimes your hands are wet and you don't want to be typing or working the mouse if you have your hands wet, but uh, at least it's dedicated. Oh, he's got a trident hit up underneath there. Where does it pull from and where does it drain from? Why would you hide your unicorn? Maybe because you don't want someone to take it. All right, so he's got a, ooh, I like this. This is cool. He has his magnetic rack for his tools up underneath. That's cool, helps them dry out. If they happen to drip, they're gonna drip straight down. Hopefully avoid the computer, but hey. And out of, out of the way, that's cool. I dig that, I, I, I would have missed that. I, that's neat, I'm gonna use that where I have a shelf and I need to store something. I dig it. And he's got some power right here too, right here on this little workspace. Another, one of the great things to have is power right on your workspace. You need to plug something in. It's right there. Got some supplements underneath. Even looks like some printing paper. Hey, he's got a dose hidden back there. This guy is clearly cram, crammed in here. But looks, not everyone has tons of space for their fish room. Looks like he's making the most with what he has. I'll give it to him. He's definitely been creative in some areas with that. Nice little workstation here. Coming over the round here between these uh, mixing station and the workstation. Looks like a tight squeeze, so uh, don't eat too many uh, carbs there, buddy. You have a utility sink. If you're gonna have a fish room, you gotta have a sink. Dedicated utility sink. That's a nice thing. And it's got lots of stuff hung off the pipes. I mean, if you don't have room for shelving, hang it off the pipe. Why not? It's right there. It dries things out. If it drips, it's dripping right into the sink. And a UV up here as well, held on with pie straps. Hey, again, you do what you gotta do sometimes. He's got it pointed that way to pull the bulb out. That's nice, looks like a big UV. He needs lots of length to get the bulb out. So he's got that situated the right way. Crammed up in there. Again, this guy is making the most of what he does. He's also writing the dates when he cleaned it and probably has got the dates on there when he changed the bulb. That's important on UV. If it's not clean and the bulb isn't fresh, it's not gonna be very effective. Back to the sink here. He even scrubs the sink. This sink looks super clean for a fish room. I'm impressed. I'm still digging everything hung off the pipes. We got, oh, look at this. This is like a, a shower rod made on a PVC pipe that clearly goes somewhere, probably from his mixing station. Reef junkie material right there. I love it. I feel like you could be like at the, shauna, at the sauna with the dudes be like, hey bro, give me a towel. And it's like, here, 
take one off my mixing station pipe. Be like, that's awesome right there, bro. All right, let's see here. Keep going around. This looks like a sump and a big sump. You've got room to work in this thing. And um, besides all the electrical um, that's plugged in and on top and timers and stuff and rat nests of cables. Look, elect wrangling electrical cables can be hard sometimes. Okay, dude, I have to say anything. I'm digging what you've done with this space in the fish room. Like, spend half a day with some wire management. At least, like, coral them up and put some Velcro zips on there. Hang on. We now refrain from this criticism to look at this really cool live fish food feeder. It's a dosing pump inside a refrigerator with what looks to be probably some kind of live brine or live mysis. Or actually, this is going to be a refrigerated mysis. I bet this is uh, the mysis feast. That's probably what that is. And it's temperature controlled. And he might even have a temperature probe back in there in case the refrigerator goes offline. He talked about that in the video. I dig that. Here's a way to feed somewhat frozen food. Let's call it refrigerated food. Just stick it all in a little refrigerator. I want to know where you got that fridge. Tell me where you got it. I may want to replicate this. I dig that. That's neato. I've always wanted to do something like this. Wouldn't have thought to put the pump in there, but why not? Obviously, it's doing well for you. It can handle it. I want to know where you got that little mini, mini fridge, though. Okay, back to the cords. Electrical cords. Yeah, do something. Like, spend half a day and, like, do something. Oh, okay. Understand, like, I can't criticize too much. If you saw my fish room, it wouldn't look too far from this. But this is the only thing that's really sticking out to me is do something with the cables. All right. We got some meter reactors up here. We got two meter reactors, just in case you need them for capacity. Curious if you couldn't do a bigger one, like an MRC one on a shelf. That would help with your clutter a little bit. Um, it looks like you have room that would get it done there. Hey, different ways to do things. I like to keep it simple. You got your RO here with tubes and cables crammed underneath here. It looks like we got a diagonal roof line. Jeez, this sounds familiar. This looks like my fish room. Your apex is crammed up underneath there. Like it's kind of like a forgotten child, like get. Get back in there, just stay in there, stay hidden. Pipes going everywhere, you got a check valve. I don't know how you ever get in there and clean that thing, but hey, we're doing what we can do. This is probably underneath the staircase. I'm seeing a Kessel light here. We got a refugium bluer light over here. I bet that that's some kind of frag tank, but it looks like it's got macro in it. So maybe it was a frag tank. I see a frag rack, but it looks like it's got macro. Maybe it's growing over from the refugium. Can be tough to have a refugium right next to a frag tank. Sometimes we have different lights that's competing. And of course, your macroalgae can grow over it like you're seeing here. We have this Tunzi LED light, though. Here's a good way to light your, or light your frag tank with a light that can get submerged. You don't have to hang it and keep it out of the way. This Tunzi light can get totally submerged, and it's okay with it. Making the most of your space with this slanted roof here, I can relate to my fish room right next to a refugium. Hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. This sump is clearly crammed in here. That's what you got to do sometimes to make it work. At least you have the fish room and you got a frag tank and you have a refugium. Hey, you're getting it all done, even if it doesn't look quote unquote pretty. Got to hand it to them. Float valve in the frag tank. Curious if that's the RODI line. Hopefully not. Don't ever plumb your RODI unit straight into your tank, whether it be your frag tank or whatever, into your sump. Don't do it. Looks like some emergency overflows here as well. We got this 90 to turn down. That's probably from the filling station. We've got options here. Making a lot of the space. Still curious about this uh, float valve in the frag station, in the frag tank. Looks like that could give you troubles as well, so it's just going to be in the way. Like, hey, check out this frag in my float valve. Again, just calling it as I see it. That's the point of these videos. I'm sure there's a good explanation for it. I'm curious about what it is. Oh, we've moved. Calcium reactor. Okay. First thing I got to see about this calcium reactor is when you want to unload, reload this thing, it's going to be a pain. You're going to have to pull that whole thing out to get the screw on, unscrew the top. This looks like a reef octopus calcium reactor to put in more media. <laughs> looks, that may be what you got done given the space that you have. It's a trade off. Just know if you're going to put in a calcium reactor, it's nice to have lots of space above it. That way you don't have to move them because they get heavy, especially with media and water. Sometimes you have to pull them out if there's a low shelf like this to reload them because you can't do it like that. 
but it looks like this guy's again it's pressed for space he's doing what he can it's close to the floor at least you don't have to try to pull it out and then like wrangle it down to the floor he can pull it right out and get to work on it i like this light right underneath extra uh, light never hurts you can see what you're doing you don't have to try to shine your phone in there to see what you're up to i dig it he thought of some things that i wouldn't have thought of that looks like a whole bunch of sponge or media pure type me uh, stuff in this tank and the sump right where it empties in it looks like a detritus trap maybe he gets in there and clean these things but geez i would not want to have to do that especially under this bracing uh, filter socks would help you keep that stuff cleaner my experience it just gets dirty anyway so i would leave it out okay enough with the cords back to the sump that's what i want we've talked about the cords don't want to go to that anymore looks like a filter sock after the uh the media there okay i'll that's something i'd rather flip it around so the filter socks and try to keep the detritus out of it look it can work both ways as you see in the saltwater tank world there's lots of ways to do things this is clearly working for the guy. I love the line written in Sharpie on the side of the sump so he knows where to change it. Large skimmer that's crammed in there. Sometimes that's what you got to do. I like to have working space around the skimmer, but if that's what you got, which what, what you have. Neck cleaner on the skimmer. Here's my experience with neck cleaners. Yes, they wipe down the neck, but once a week you got to get in there and take the whole thing apart to clean it to really have your skimmer still work for you effectively. Maybe once a week is okay with you, Personally, I'd rather clean mine twice a week, not have to deal with the neck cleaner. You've got a refugium here. You've got some mangroves growing in here as well. Some macroalgae in there. Sizable refugium for this size tank. Looks like you're getting some good growth. Hopefully keep that cleaned because if there's not room for algae to grow, then it's not growing and it's not doing some nutrient export for you. Always dig the mangroves. Here's the thing about mangroves. They grow really slow. Don't count on them for any kind of nutrient export but they are cool to look at. Nothing like a bonsai mangrove. They take time to grow, but if you got the time, you got the patience, they're very rewarding. Back to the little frag tank here that looks overgrown with macro. You could probably trim off some macro and sell it or ship it to some people. I hear macro algae is really pricey in New York City. It's in hot demand. You never know where opportunity lies. Check this out. He's got a dedicated washer for his filter socks. It's got bleach right next to it. Yes, I bleach filter socks, but this is great. No trying to sneak it by your wife or worried about it clogging up your clothes washer. That washer right there fits perfectly in the space and it's dedicated for his filter socks because I see one hanging out the top. I dig it. If I'm going to have socks, that's probably going to be on my list if I can swing it. Tight space here around the sump, but he's got working room. Gotta love the PVC pipe from the mixing station as the towel for the men's room oh and he's even got a calendar on the slanted roof i mean there's pinup calendars and then there's this calendar but hey to each their own writing look probably writing a schedule on this when he changed things look that can work if you're at least doing that fantastic forget trying to remember it because you won't i personally like to put it in my phone but if you have it on the calendar you refer to the calendar that's better than absolutely nothing at all I dig it. Good use of space again. It's crammed in here, but it works for the guy. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. That's what you got. Make the most of it. Here's one way to get it done.